Hi, I'm Madison Mary and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, please and hazard click that subscribe button down below. And without further ado, let's get into my brand new reading vlog. So in this reading vlog, I am looking to read arcs that are coming out on May 4th and May 5th. I received some the other week and I had put them all on my shelf. I have like a little area where I keep all my arcs and I realized, oh my God, I have so many that are coming out on the same day. Oh, shit. So I wanted to do a vlog where I read all of them, hopefully, maybe, by that time. And so you can know, hey, these new releases are coming out. Should you pick them up? Should you not? What's going on? So I have five books here. The thing is, is I actually read one of them already. I started it um, the night before I got my first dose of the vaccine. And I was like, oh, I'll just vlog tomorrow and start it. And then I got the vaccine and I was like, I have negative desire to start a vlog today. So I didn't. And then I ended up finishing the book that night. So. So then it's The Secret Bridesmaid by Katie Birchall. This is her American debut and her adult romance debut. It follows Sophie Breeze, who is a professional bridesmaid. So she's for brides who want discretion and also don't want a wedding planner because wedding planners tend to take over everything and organize everything. But Sophie is there to just kind of help the bride do whatever the bride needs to do. She does organize things if things need to be done, but she's basically there as like a personal assistant, making sure everything goes smoothly. She ends up taking on these different personas for the bride so that People think that she's just like a long lost friend or an old cousin or a workplace colleague. And what ends up happening is that there's this massive wedding about to happen. It's the marriage of Lady Cordelia. She is the daughter of the Marquis of Mead, who is like very affluent, very influential. She used to be a huge party girl back in the day and like all the teenagers wanted to be her. And then she kind of fell out of the public eye and now she's getting married and it's like, the wedding of the season. Sophie ends up getting hired to be a secret bridesmaid for Cordelia. The only problem is that she's actually hired by Cordelia's mom and Cordelia has absolutely no desire to have a secret bridesmaid. She's like, I don't want you, I don't need you, I don't trust you, you're awful. I'm gonna make your life a living hell unless you quit. And so it's Sophie trying to, you know, deal with this bridezilla, still trying to keep this job because it pays a lot. It'll help her with more word of mouth, with more wealthy clients. And she also has a lot going on. She's just got a wedding invitation to her ex-boyfriend's wedding, who broke up with her only a year ago after dating for eight years. And she's just, she's got a lot going on in her life. And I absolutely adored this. It is more chiclet than a romance. It is pitched as a British rom-com, but I would call it a chiclet just because it focuses more on Sophie's story as a person, who she is. And at the same time, her and Cordelia had this really, really beautiful friendship that takes place over the course of this book. I would say the female friendship is actually the main focus of this story. It's more so about Cordelia letting down her walls, letting Sophie in, this friendship blooming between the two of them. It's Sophie kind of getting out of her shell because of everything that <laughs> Cordelia makes her do. And Cordelia finally finding a friend after being so betrayed in her past. Like these are two women who have had a lot go on in their lives and they have both dealt with it very differently. And I just loved seeing their progression. There is a slight romantic subplot between Sophie and Cordelia's older brother. And I really enjoyed that. It's really fun because you also get to see little inklings of the other weddings that she's planning throughout this time of dealing with Cordelia and they are hilarious. Like it is so accurate the way that she is dealing with some of these people, whether it's the other women in the bridesmaid party, if it's just different people that she's trying to book for certain events. She has this one wedding, there's a Star Wars theme and the bride is like, I would think it would be a great idea if you could be Chewbacca. And so she has to get a whole Chewbacca outfit for the wedding. And it's just, it's hilarious the things she does. Like she does everything to make their lives easier. So she never really says no, unless it's something that's super impossible. So she's always trying to please the brides and it is just hilarious. And I loved it. I think a lot of people will really enjoy this. It is not my typical read. I don't normally go into chiclets or pick them up, but I'm really digging this and I actually think it's a kind of genre that I want to get more into. Then I have the other books. So these are the other three that come out on the same day. We have Like Cats and Dogs, which is a romance between a vet and a woman who owns a cat cafe. Then we have The Girls With Stars In Her Eyes. This is a rock star romance. And then we have Skybreaker, which is a fantasy. This is the sequel to Night Spinner, which is a gender bent hunchback of Notre Dame retelling. Let's get into the vlog. Hey, so I just wanna do a quick update. I'm like 50% of the way through Like Cats and Dogs. Looking at this cover, you would not know how steamy it is. Like it has the kind of 
steam that I would read in like an indie romance. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it smut, but I would say it's, it's way more descriptive and just the way it talks about the sex scenes is just way more in detail than I would expect for a traditionally published romance. But I'm just not digging the actual romance between the two characters. It is hate to love and they're definitely like fully fledged enemies. Like they just do not get along at the moment, but whenever they fight, they get horny and then they have sex. So that's kind of like they had this benefits relationship where they, you know, just do each other, which I'm a fan of. I think that we need to see more books where people just have flings and have these beneficial relationships sexually with people. But I just, I don't see how the two of them can actually ha end up with an actual relationship because they don't connect emotionally. They don't open up to each other in the same way that you would expect by 50% through a book. I don't see them being a, an a legit couple. I can't see them progressing further. That's just not something I see for these two characters. Plus the guy just got divorced like three months ago. The woman cheated on him and like he went through a crap kind of stuff. Like I don't see how he's gonna suddenly like open up to this woman. Like it just does not seem reasonable at all. So I don't know, we'll see. I'm trying to suspend my disbelief for this, but I just, I do not know, but I have much to do and I'm just got assigned to like three of my finals, so <laughs> fun. But yeah, I'll update you when I finished it and maybe start the next one. Bye. Hey, okay, so I have a couple of updates for you. I finished Like Cats and Dogs. I think I'm giving it like a, a 3.5 stars because I did cry at one point, very emotionally. So I always bump up a book half a stuff whenever that happens. But like, as much as I did enjoy this, I A, did not like the epilogue. This is a romance where the epilogue kind of defeated a lot of the issues the characters were having throughout the book. I mentioned it in the last clip that Caleb, who is the veterinarian in this book, he was divorced like a year ago. Um, the, the papers were like finalized only a couple months ago and like he's still really reeling from his divorce and so he's very closed off he doesn't really want to let anyone in he doesn't want to ever have a romance again he doesn't have any interest in Lauren because she kind of is a bit too flighty like his ex-wife was um so he's very against it and then Lauren you know her ex-boyfriend of eight years who broke up with her a year ago is getting married right now and is also having a baby so she's like thrown for a loop because of that but she's sworn off dating and is just like looking after herself right now and she's the one who owns the cat cafe um well she runs it there's like this really sweet and kooky old lady who actually owns the building that the cat cafe is in which is next door to the vet hospital so it's like really i love the old lady she's the best like i enjoyed this as a book overall it's just the romance wasn't a hundred percent there for me it did get better as the book went on um, you definitely did see why they were falling for each other and how they fell for each other. I just felt like they said, I love you way too quickly. I felt like the way that the epilogue went really rubbed me the wrong way. And I did enjoy seeing like a more benefits relationship in a book like this. And I've also been in very similar situations as to this relationship. It's just to me at the end of the day, I'm not sure. I know there's just something that didn't vibe with it for me. So it's, it's a 3.5 stars, which is good, but not like, Fabulous. Um, I'm now 50% into The Girl With Stars In Her Eyes. This is pitched as um, A Star Is Born Meets Daisy Jones and The Six by way of Colleen Hoover. And I think that is extremely accurate. I can definitely understand how those vibes are this book. We're following Tony Bennett and when she was a kid, her mum was like this kind of mild star. Um, and then when she finally got her big break, she shipped Tony off to live with her dad, who she'd never ever met before. And her dad was awful to her. He lived in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania. And the one friend she made was Sebastian and he was a year older than her. They really got along together. They played the guitar together. They had this dream that they would one day escape their small town with these savings that they'd had all this time. And then he just, when he turned 18, up and left out of nowhere. And she was just heartbroken by this. And she was like, I can never, I'm not trusting anyone again. I will get myself where I need to be. And then we get those flashbacks throughout. And I will say, I don't think this would be good in audiobook because the flashbacks happen very randomly and you don't actually get like, 
The only way you know that it's a flashback is because the font changes half the time. So I'm not sure how that would work with an audiobook, but I am really enjoying this so far. Basically, we're following Tony and we're following Seb's POV, but he's like more 50 50. So she is, you know, living in Philadelphia. She's lived for five years. She's trying to make a name for herself as an artist. She really wants to be a producer one day. That's like her ultimate dream. And there's this really big up and coming girl band called the Lilies. And what happens is one of the girls from the Lilies, Candy, she is a bit of a hot mess and a half in the tabloids. She's this party girl, rich princess. And even though she's like this amazing, amazing guitarist, she's just, she, the press she's getting for them is the wrong kind. So they threaten to kick her out of the band and they are looking for a replacement while she tries to get her shit together. And Tony ends up getting, you know, proposition to audition. It's like a very close audition. And she goes, she auditions and they give her the job. As it happens, Sebastian's actually part of the Lilies. He's one of their, he's kind of like a manager for them, but it's more of like a handler. It's really interesting learning about the circuit. It's a big focus on, you know, women in the music industry and how they are treated, how they're looked down upon, and just the way that Tony is treated by the people around her because of her being a woman and a woman of color. I'm really enjoying the different conversations. I think it's really important. I will say though that there are, you know, triggers in this for excessive alcohol drinking, excessive drug use, and all those kind of things. I'm really interested to see how the relationship between Tony and Sebastian plays out because. Tony wants absolutely nothing to do with him. She's like, I can never forgive him for everything that he did because it was just awful. And so I'm really digging it so far. It's definitely not something I would normally read. And this isn't a romance. I wouldn't say this is more just like a girl story. I wouldn't want to call it chick lit because it's not chick lit, but you know, I'm really digging it. It's definitely more of like a story of the music industry in general. So if that's something that you dig, pick it up. I do also want to mention that I'm changing my plans for the other books I'm reading in this vlog because I just got sent The Play to Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. If you're not aware, if you're new to my channel, Trisha Levenseller is one of my order by authors. This is her fifth book. She sent me a hardcover copy. And so I'm going to read this and I'm super stoked about it. It is gorgeous. Um, I know it's about like a bladesmith and that's all I know about and I'll let you know exactly the premise when I read it. So I'm reading this as well. And then I'm also reading a book called Twisted Love. This got sent to me as an EARC by the author and I need to read and review it by April 29th. So I'm also going to include that in this vlog. So those will be the next two books that I read and then if I can fit in a fifth one, sick. If not, I'm not going to make myself, plus I don't want this vlog to be like eons and eons long. So Twisted Love, I'm not sure what it's about, but I'm pretty sure it's a dark romance, which is not something I normally read, but I wanted to give it a try just because I want to branch out with my romance reading. And yes, that is it. And I shall update you later. Goodbye. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, so, um, been a couple days. <sighs> Finals week has been like busy AF, but <laughs> I actually finished two books. So I finished The Girl with Stars in Her Eyes and then I actually read and finished Twisted Love in like two sittings. The Girl with Stars in Her Eyes, I'm giving it a four stars. I actually really enjoyed it and it was a really great story. It's definitely not, the, the romance is a subplot to this. This is more about women in the music industry and the sexism in the industry and Tony's emotional journey throughout it because she was abandoned by her mum as a child and then her dad was a dickhead and then Seb left her and then her and Seb having a second chance romance. And I actually really liked the second chance romance aspect of it. And I think that it was a really great progression because she had to learn to trust him again and he had to gain her trust back as well. I will admit I hated Candy. Candy is like the problematic person in the group and like the toxic personality, drugs, alcohol, typical rock and roll, heiress, a lot of issues and I hated her. You were supposed to hate her. You weren't supposed to like her, but I really hated her. And because she was in a lot of um, Sebastian's POV, it, he wasn't like my favorite because of that. It's definitely more slice of life than romance. And I'm really excited because I was uh, messaging the author on Instagram and she said that each of the members of the Lilies is gonna get their own book. And I'm so excited because they're really great characters. Like this is such an immersive story. Like you feel like you are there, like you're a fly on the wall in the music industry, watching everything go down. And it was just stellar. It wasn't like a full five stars, but really great book. And I would highly recommend it. Twisted Love. Now this was a ride. I don't normally read dark romances and this is a dark romance, but I really enjoyed it. I'm giving it a four out of five stars. I will admit the sex in this, the reason why it's not a five stars is because while I loved everything, I 
didn't like it because he, the guy, likes to call women names during sex and I'm, it just doesn't do it for me. Um, it kind of turns me off a little bit. So I was like, oh, with the sex scenes, but like that's my own personal thing. Like there are some people out there who don't mind reading about that or who are really into it and like great for you. I'm just not my cup of tea, but um, I thought it was a really fun book. So basically we are following the romance between Ava and Alex. Ava Chen is 22, she's a college student, she's living her life, she's really bubbly, she's like rainbows and sunshine and just looks for the good in the world, she's a photography student, but she has trauma because as a child her mum <laughs> tried to drown her and kill her, um, and then her mum committed suicide afterwards and she actually lost her memories as a child and so she can't remember anything before the age of nine and she kind of has these like dream flashbacks and she has a huge fear of water now and so she's got her own traumas but she tries to still be a really happy person despite that and then we have Alex Volkov he is Ukrainian and he witnessed his parents and younger sister a baby sister actually get murdered and ever since then he has been hellbent on revenge. He has an IQ of 160, he's super smart. He has like this special memory thing where he can vividly remember events in his life and feel like he's reliving them, which is, you know, not great with the whole murder thing that went on. His whole personality is like, he now is the CEO of like his own real estate group. He is hellbent on revenge, like I said, on the people who caused, you know, who put up the hit on his family. And he is not above like murder or hiring hitmen or blackmailing, like he's just, does a lot of shady shit. Kind of reminds me of like the mafia almost. But he is actually Ava's brother's best friend. There's like a four or five year age gap between them. And when Ava's brother goes overseas for like a medical volunteer trip thing for two years, um, he's like, hey, Alex, can you look after my baby sister? Because she's really naive. She trusts people too much. And I just, there's a lot going on with her and I just need someone to look after her. And so he ends up agreeing to do that reluctantly. But he's like a huge alpha male. So he lives next door to her because that's where her brother used to live. And so he's looking after her and he's very protective, kind of stalkerish at times. And I mean, I enjoyed their romance. It was kind of cool to see Ava kind of grow a backbone and really stand up for herself and kind of be like, everyone treats me like I'm really fragile, but I can stand on my own. And her thawing his icy exterior was really sweet. And like, he helped her to swim at one stage. Like he helped her get over that fear. And I like, my heart melted during those scenes. It was like my favorite. Yeah, and then the mystery aspect to do with like his whole revenge plot and her whole like lost memories. I really love that. I think that I've learned what I really like in dark romances is a mystery thriller aspect to them. I dug it. I like the whole idea of like grumpy ex sunshine characters slash best friends, little sister. Like I enjoyed it. So I'm super excited. Ava has three best friends and each of the best friends is gonna get their own romance. And I know there's gonna be a romance between her best friend Jules and her brother for sure. And then the next book is a romance between her friend who's a princess and the princess's bodyguard. And I'm like, so here for it. I'm like, oh, the princess bodyguard romance is gonna be so amazing, especially because you got to learn more about like the princess character as the book goes on and you can see like all the little hints and stuff. <laughs> like if this was four stars, I'm telling you right now, I'm giving you a five star prediction for that one. I'm like, dad comes back on Friday and we're gonna start Rule of Wolves up. So I think I can only fit one more book into this vlog before he gets back. And I'm gonna do Blade of Secrets for that. I do know what it's about now. So we're following Ziva and she is a bladesmith, but she has the ability to imbue weapons with magic. She has a lot of social anxiety. She also has a sister. And one day she is commissioned to create this blade for a warlord. And it's a blade that can steal a person's secrets. And so she, when she finds out that he wants to use it to like enslave and take over people, she's like, I can't let him have this weapon. I need to escape. So her and her sister escape to like outrun the warlord and they end up, you know, alongside a very handsome mercenary and a young scholar. So yeah, catch you up when I've read at least 50% of Trisha Levenseller's book. Goodbye. I'm back. Surprise. So I'm actually almost done with the book. I have this much left to go. So um, I know I was supposed to update you a little bit earlier, but whoopsies. It is, like I just said before, you're following Ziva. She has a lot of social anxiety. We don't really know where the anxiety comes from, why she doesn't like being around people, being around crowds, why she's so self-conscious, you know, 
when she has to interact with people she feels like they're always staring at her that if they're laughing they're laughing because she's stupid or she did something bad or like there's just something wrong with her um she feels like she just doesn't really fit in she doesn't trust people she can't make eye contact when talking to people whenever she has a conversation with someone she'll always sit there afterwards and like rethink everything she said making sure that it was fine and okay so I think that the social anxiety representation in this is actually pretty great and she also has like panic attacks when she has to deal with people as well so I really appreciate this like mental health representation in a fantasy book but it's also a bit different because you don't normally follow heroines like her who are always so anxious and afraid of the world but suddenly have to be thrust into it to save who they love and to save the world you know she's an unlikely hero she's not someone who would ever expect this of herself um yes she's a weaponsmith and she creates amazing magically imbued weapons but she doesn't fight um she doesn't like violence she creates weapons because she hopes that it will help deter people from violence if people have like magical things which doesn't really make much sense but you know it's fine like i said she has a younger sister Tamara, and i really love their relationship it's very complex and you can see that you know while they do love each other they're both envious of each other for different reasons Tamara is very out there she's flirty and she you know is the younger sister who is always pushing her sister to go out and do things and at the same time she's also very understanding and protects her older sister because of the anxiety that she goes through and she's also a bit resentful because Ziva is so anxious that you know they don't really have an she doesn't really have an opportunity to go out and actually enjoy the world and do the things that she loves because she feels kind of trapped by her older sister. At the same time, Ziva is envious of Tamara because she is so out there and social and she's able to interact with people and Ziva really wants to be able to do that but she just this anxiety she has prevents that so it's definitely really interesting their dynamic and i'm a huge fan of sisterly bonds in books and i really love it in this one i think the dynamic the way that it keeps playing out is great because they're messy and they love each other i'm enjoying it there's still banter obviously um you know there's the mercenary and the young scholar they're hilarious together because the mercenary is hired to help take ziva and her sister to you know these places safely because they are being hunted down and the young scholar is following them because he is a magical scholar he studies magic and so he wants to study ziva and so he's just along for the ride and i love the four of them together it's hilarious especially because like the mercenary and the scholar just are always butting heads and they're like my favorite banter is between them i love the small romance that's occurring between uh tamra and the young scholar because she's like why isn't he you know falling head over heels for me people are always like stunned by my beauty and want to be with me and yet he's just so not doing that and so i really love that romance going on there and then obviously the romance between the mercenary and ziva is really sweet because even though he is this big burly mercenary um by the way ziva is six foot and she's not the most conventionally beautiful person and so to finally be around a man who's like six and a half feet she's like i've never been around many men who are taller than me who could hold their own against me and so that's really fun part of it and he's also very observant and very sweet it's a really interesting progression i'm definitely digging it at the moment it's probably just a four star read which is kind of sad because i'm a huge fan of trisha levin sellers other books they're all five stars but i just think i'm not connecting to it on the same way as those books yeah i'm, I'm digging it i'm curious to see if it's going to keep on going i'm a little afraid so <laughs> we'll see. Hey, okay, so I finished Blind of Secrets. Here it is. Um, I really loved it. Like that la it sounds so weird, but like that last quarter was so amazing. Um, it's uh, I'm struggling with what I want to rate it, but I'll get to that in a sec. So the romance in this totally paid off. It is so slow burn, but it is also like the sweetest romance ever. So like I said, we do follow two different romances. We follow the one between um, Ziva's sister and the scholar, and then also Ziva and the mercenary. The mercenary's name is Kellen, and it's just so precious because like she's so anxious, but like this is the first person outside of like her sister that she's finally like opening up to and it's like beginning to learn to trust and who she wants to be around and who she's like maybe I am okay like touching people and being around them and like trusting them and it's just like the progression throughout this book is just so satisfying when everything comes to fruition and he's just like so observant and caring for her like he tries to be 
very standoffish because he doesn't actually want to let people get close to him because he has his own things that he needs to protect and he's just afraid of that kind of vulnerability but then like he's so observant of her and like pays attention to like all of her anxieties and all the things that she like has problems with and like is so caring about them and then there's like this one scene that is just like mm. i think the secondary romance between Temra and the scholar the scholar's name is Petrick freaking love that kid like he is just hilarious i said before that he's one of my favorites and he still is one of my favorite characters but oh my god there is a plot twist at the end of this which is typical trish levenzella style like she has some really great plot twists because you become so invested in everything that's going on that you kind of st stop thinking about certain things and she's just like what bam check this out and you're like ma'am what so like that happened, which is like kudos to Trisha for catching me completely off guard like that. Like did not see that coming whatsoever. I really did enjoy it. It was a really fun world to learn about. And I definitely think in the sequel, we're going to learn even more about some of the different magic in this world too, which is really unique. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities for this. It's not a five star read. I just think that like while I really enjoyed this book and I was really into it, there was just something missing from it. And you know, there were times when I will admit like her social anxiety did kind of take you out of the story, but it's still something that I appreciated. So I'm a little bit, I, like I don't really know how I want to deal with that yet. So I'm thinking of 4.25 is the most accurate rating. I really did love it. I would say, so for all the books coming out today on May 4th, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> sorry when you guys see this I'm actually going to get my second dose of the vaccine <laughs> I'm looking at my calendar and I'm just like huh, May 4th it says a vaccine appointment um I have a gigantic calendar on my wall because I need everything written down in my life but um surprise so out of all the ones coming out today definitely definitely recommend The Secret Bridesmaid my favorite book out of all these that comes out today um then I would say Blade of Secrets um, Twisted Love and The Girl with Stars in Her Eyes, they're quite equal in how I felt about them both. And then we have like Cats and Dogs, which the more I think about, and especially after I wrote my Goodreads review for it, it's like a 2.75 star read. It's like, it had some things, like I did cry because I was emotionally invested in something that happened with the whole Friends with Benefits thing that's very closely related, something I went through myself. But just because I've gone through that doesn't mean that like, it makes for a good romance and the epilogue in that book just really killed everything for me so i'm just gonna give it a 2.75 i don't really recommend it but like if it's something that you think would be fun to pick up still pick it up yeah um i really do want to make another one of these there's a lot of arcs coming out on june 1st that i have so i would love to make a june 1st arc vlog if you are interested in that please comment a yellow flower in like emoji in the comments I don't remember if it's a sunflower or not, but it's the yellow flower. That's the emoji. <laughs> that's all I remember of it. I don't know why I'm picking that, but I am. Um, cause I just think it would be fun to do. Oh, oh, and quickly I did get my nails done today. You can probably tell cause while I'm talking, so. Here are my new nails. I am totally in love with them. They did cost me a pretty penny cause they were a completely new set with French, but you know, totally worth it. Cause I just had my last grad class today. So I have a month off and then I start my thesis classes up. So. Four weeks of freedom and then back on the grind but it's all good um yeah so if you did enjoy this video please hit the like button down below if you want to see more of me please subscribe to my channel and until next time thanks a bunch everyone bye